A podcast. What is the word? A podcast by Kaluga. A podcast. No. By Kaluga. Yeah. yeah. Hi, I'm Christy, co-founder at Kalugo, mom of four, and your host as we chat all things fourth trimester on this season of Today We Tried. Today is a treat. I chat with Alexis Christiana, a content creator and mom of two, who just hits that perfect balance of relatable and inspiring content. She's just lovely. And we cover a lot, including how she and her husband get it done with no childcare help, her tandem breastfeeding journey, and why self-care on the go could be the best new idea you hear this week. Before we jump in, a quick reminder that you can email me at any time. I'm cpo at highkalugo.com. I'd love to hear your thoughts, questions, and what you'd like to hear from us next. Let's jump in. I am so excited to be here today with Alexis. She's someone I've had a chance to meet through Kalugo, and I've been following along as her family has grown from when, you know, when Zion was just a baby and now she has two with Zuri. So Alexis, thank you so much for being here and would love to have you just introduce yourself, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. Well, hello, everyone. <laughs> um, first of all, thank you so much for having me. You know, just just getting on this call, you guys, was a true motherhood <laughs> battle. It took a long, long time to get us here. My name is Alexis. I live in Brooklyn with my family, my husband Tolu, our son Zion, and our daughter Zuri, who's four and a half months. I, during the pandemic, shifted into like being a full time model into being a content creator, just like sharing, I don't know, my motherhood journey through Instagram. And I'm so like really happy to be like where I'm at now. Just so many different connections I made. And I just love sharing about my breastfeeding journey. I'm tandem nursing right now. And just sharing like anything about motherhood. It's just, there's so much that goes into being a mom. So I just wanted to see a little more of myself out there and just like more raw stuff online. I think sometimes Instagram could be kind of fluffy and I just try to like share the real, but yeah, that's me. (laughs) Well, I'm so excited to have you and We'll definitely include your Instagram handle in the show notes because really everyone should be following you. Um, It's really beautiful content that is both inspiring and as you said, very real in a way that I feel is super, I don't know, makes it feel like accessible for people that are like, okay, I can do that too. Like, so I love it. And so, as you said, you have two kiddos now. So when you were pregnant the second time around and like thinking about the fourth trimester, what did you kind of think it was going to be like introducing second baby into your family? Well, you know, like the blessing of having your second child is you already know kind of what's to come. So you prepare differently. Uh, With Zion, I really didn't prepare. I didn't prepare at all for the fourth trimester. I didn't know that was the thing. I was like, okay, the baby comes and it's just, it's just about the baby. But I learned that that's not the case. There was so much that comes after that. So this time I really made sure I had all the right products I needed. I was just trying to be mentally prepared. I had the support around me. My husband already knew like what was going to happen this time around because I, <laughs> my hormones were all over the place. Yeah. You know, first weeks after giving birth. So he already knew like how to speak with me, how to communicate with me, how to just like be there for me in different ways. I think that's really important to make sure you have that supportive partner if not not a partner then just you know family friends around you who can really be there to help you up in that time because you need so much in that in that time uh, you, the, the baby needs a lot obviously but you, the mom is just going through so many physical emotional changes that having support is I think to me like the most crucial thing and that's just what I'm really blessed to have around me and so did you and Tolu talk in advance like okay we both know what's coming this is what we want to like think about and talk about, or was it just that he kind of like knew how to jump in? Did you have that explicit conversation about it? Yeah. Like it's, it's kind of a combination of both. We talked about it before. Like I'm like, Hey baby, you know, what's about to happen. I'm about to be super tired, breastfeeding. I'm going to be cranky, moody, my hormones everywhere. I was like, so just, you know, whatever I say to you, just ignore it. Because for me, and not for everybody to say, but I get super like cranky, um, just all randomly snap. I just get kind of can get overwhelmed and it would just like come out like I'm trying to be rude to him and I'm really not. I'm just like, okay, I had a moment. So we just prepared in that way. He he knows what happened the first time around. So he already knew like what was coming and he just, he's naturally like, 
he like, people see him and I feel like people are like wow he looks like this big guy like just but he's a really nurturing man and he's really caring and his mom I don't know what she did when she raised him but <laughs> he's that's just how he is he does this goes like above and beyond he does stuff that I'm just like, wow like you know that's my husband so I'm so just blessed that he's my husband <laughs> and he does all these things for me is there anything in particular he does that's the thing that helps the most um just with breastfeeding he always makes sure that I'm hydrated and and I'm even, I'm working on like a funny reels video for it because he, it makes me laugh. He brings me like the best like ice cold water, like right when I need it. Like I'm like, I'll just go pump thirsty. And like, he's just like right there with this cold water. I'm like, oh my goodness, thank you. <laughs> That's like it, every time. And the thirst with breastfeeding is so intense. I feel like yeah. it comes out of nowhere and all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, like I'm. <laughs> We need water yeah. so that's, that's so he just he just finds little ways little things that he does that are just helps me to get through like a day that's great to have and are both right. of you home right now all day yes yeah we are I feel like the pandemic kind of shifted everybody's lives around with work and everything um prior to that he was working in the city he was he's a recording engineer a songwriter a music producer an artist he's all immersed in the music industry and that lifestyle is like a light a, a late night lifestyle uh, whenever I was pregnant with Zion like he I, I modeled in the morning I did rent you know stuff in the daytime and then he was gone all night and we wouldn't really see that much of each other and when the pandemic happened he was really he was out a lot and then he was actually here got to really be with Zion and that really changed him as a father the way he like is he's he's really really present and he really enjoys being present We've managed to make it work from home with just the two of us. And at first I was like, oh, I don't know if we could do it, but we've, we've gotten this far. I mean, Alexis and Tolo are doing this. You guys don't have other childcare, you said, right? We don't. Um, I, I know a lot of people have nannies, sitters, and the type of work that we do doesn't, I feel like we don't need that help. Um, I'm able to get through a day without like, okay, I need, I need someone here to like create I've created my own little office hours for myself that I just keep around. And then my husband, he'll just do stuff the kind of the same way. He'll just work on, on music. Once the kids go to sleep at night, he just works on music. It's not, it really hasn't been that hard <laughs> for us to do it. As Alexis said at the beginning, it took us a while to like both find time when we were free to chat. Cause we, yeah, <laughs> there's lots of, you that know, was things. That was me. <laughs> no, no. Well, I mean, I think we had one exchange where you were like, I haven't had time to brush my teeth today. And I was like, oh yeah, I barely washed my face. Like I just work, yeah. <laughs> but we're yeah. here. And Alexis has an amazing response. Like, I guess it's an auto response to emails you get in. And it says that in order to try to create this balance between work and life, you only respond to emails between a certain window of time every day. And I love that you just have that proactively out there. So you're setting expectations and it totally works. Maybe people think they can't draw those boundaries or if they do, there'll be some like detriment, but how have you found that to be helpful in setting these boundaries? This whole idea was not even mine. It was my husband's idea because one day there was a company who I was going into a partnership with that I ended up not doing one, one with because they just were really not respectful of me being a mom. And it's shocking to me that a lot of these brands are actually like parent companies and they, they don't hire people who are parents, I think. And there's like, like a disconnect with them understanding like what goes on in the day. Some people make an assumption that most content creators from home, they do have help because most of them do have childcare and things like that. But we don't have that. So it, our days are really all over the place and I can't guarantee something because something could happen at any moment. So anyway, I was just, I was crying one day because of an email I received that was just so mean. And it was just like, I was like, wow, like I cannot believe someone just emailed this to me. Like, I'm like, I'm a mom, like I'm a person. I so my husband was like, okay, we need to create some kind of boundaries now. Um, I'm not okay with you getting so stressed and worked up and we need to, we need to like have, you need to have a, some type of email sign off. So we actually wrote that together. It's been working great. Um, how people have been really respectful of that. And I, I, I keep true to it. If someone emails me at like at four o'clock, I just don't look at my phone because that's the time where you know, we start making dinner at five. We start doing like bath time around like, um, like six thirty seven o'clock. So I just, it helps me to also disconnect from looking at my phone and to just be present with Zion and Zuri and not like be so like, okay, I need to email this brand and do this and that because it, it being a content creator from home and especially like being a mom content creator, your lives are just, it just merges. It's just like, it's all intertwined. So you have to just separate it, really have like some type of peace in your life. 
And really the people you want to be working with are people who are going to see that and respect that. It just made me start to think about ways that I could try to do that to be fully present in these different areas of your life, right? Like be fully present when you're working and be fully present when you're with your kids and be fully present when you're with your partner. Like setting those boundaries is a really smart way to do it. I also feel like I would need Ted to like write that email for me so I can relate to like, (laughs) well, I feel like other people see it, right? It's like our partners are the ones who see the effect on us and they're the ones. It's so easy. I feel like, especially as women, you're like, okay, like I did something wrong. And I feel like, I mean, not to be beat into stereotypes, but I feel like my husband's a lot better at being like, no, you need to take action for yourself, protect yourself in this moment. Especially. And then as moms, we try to like, juggle so much that you're like, well, I can take it on. It's okay. I can just keep doing it. But you know, you said your partners, they see like, okay, no, you're going to have a burnout. You need to like have some type of separation and give yourself some, you know, some grace there. Cause it's like, it, it can get crazy. It sounds like coming into the fourth trimester this time you had your goat. So what were you, the products you made sure you had on hand? I had to have a peri bottle. Like I took a few from the hospital, but I had like the freedom on peri bottle. Um, and then I had like ice pad packs, which hazel pad, all the soothing items you need to heal yourself down there. <laughs> well, and you can get stuff from the hospital, but the Frida mm-hmm. version is like so much nicer. And I didn't realize yeah. that they could be better. I was like, oh, this is a better Perry bottle. Like who knew that existed? Yeah, the, the hospital one, it, it's, it works, but this yeah. was like the luxury of Perry bottles. You just feel like so luxurious in your four trimester clean, planet cleaning <laughs> activities. But yeah, like I just had all the stuff I needed to take care of myself there. And I also got some like bath items, some like lotions I like, bath bomb, just things to like feel like clean and it's just me time sometimes. Were you, was there anything this time around? I mean, I guess a very large difference is you had Zion at home when you brought Zuri home. That's a lot of times, like when I was pregnant the second time and I had the twins and I was like, am I more tired? Is this pregnancy really different because I'm just, it's just different? Or is it like, cause I'm running after toddlers? I'm, I mostly do stuff like during nap time. That's my thing. During the day, like for me, self-care can be like, okay, we woke up. I had the luxury to wash my face today and I put on a sheet mask that I left on. And Zion, like, loves seeing me with face masks. I'll put, like, a sheet mask on and leave it on for 20 minutes. He helps me take it off, like, pad in the serum. I love that. <laughs> Just things you can do throughout your day to feel like you're okay. Like, I, I like sheet masks. I like to under eye masks on. That don't, Like, self-care that's, like, on the go. <laughs> <laughs> that's- <laughs> that is, I know. I feel like that's the consummate, like, mom self-care. It's like, <laughs> self-care on the go. I love it. Right. How did Zion react to Zuri? And that, you know, and your attention being divided. We were, at first we we're like, okay, he's like a sour patch kid. One minute he's like super sweet about it. And then all of a sudden he's like sour and like, doesn't want to see her anymore. When he first saw her, he was so excited. He like ran and tried to like take her out of the car seat. Like he wanted to immediately get her. Um, and then like, once it settled then like, okay, like she's like here and she's not leaving. There's like a lot of hitting going on. I don't know if you experienced that, but it's really stressful. <laughs> it's really stressful. Well, and so. Zuri is four and a half months. So she's not like yeah. crawling yet. No, not yet. Okay. No. So like our big, so Holland is eight months. It is army crawling around everywhere. And so now we're right. dealing with, she just wants to get into all of his toys. And so when we'll like try to push her head out of the, you know, he's trying to just like get her to turn her body and we're like, okay, you got like, like, whoa. Yeah. Not like yeah. That. Not like that. Let's so. It's better now he's starting he'll like grab her by the ankles and kind of pull her and I'm like okay well that's better I guess than her head I don't know no that's funny because like she's she's learning to like you know she's rolls over and stuff so Zion likes to do tummy time with her that oh, they like yeah. to bond that way they love doing he loves doing tummy time with her he reads her books like really sweet bonding moments they have so he likes to try to like roll her over too kind of like push her like yeah. roll over <laughs> oh, like let her do it by herself he he loves her I feel like in the beginning, he felt like his space was invaded. Oh, okay, what's, are they forgetting about me? I could see it in his eyes, especially when I was nursing her. He was, he would cry. He was screaming, like, where I was like, just, she's going to eat. And he was like, no, mommy, no. Like, but he, he got through it. We like talked him through everything. We're now like, he gets like, okay, baby sister can only eat booby milk. And he'll be like, mommy, baby sister, hungry, hungry. Like he'll like want her to have booby milk is what he Aww. calls it. So. He, he loves her, like their bond and watching it grow. And I'm like excited to see like it continue through life. And you said you're tandem breastfeeding. Yes. 
So right. how has that worked this time around with both establishing breastfeeding with Zuri and also nursing Zion? So what you said is definitely right. Like when you first start, you, you need that, you have to establish that relationship with Zion. Like, you know, just being him, we, we had all the time to figure it out. I don't know what it is, but I feel like when you start tandem nursing, it kind of just, you just go, okay, just let's keep going. Let's just start. Let's just go. I, I don't even know to say like when it got comfortable, it just happened. <laughs> but like, you know, we were in the hospital for three days um, and we didn't get to really nurse there. She was in an incubator. Uh, Cause she had jaundice, her jaundice levels were really high. So I was like okay. expressing milk, giving it to her. So when we got home, wait, so how like, do okay, you give it to her if she's in the incubator? So how did you get yeah, it to her? When they're incubator, they need to stay in there as long as possible. Um, but if you need to take them out to nurse, they're they allow you to take them out, but you have to put them back within like twenty minutes. So I was taking her out like to feed her, and if she wanted more food while she was in there. I would just have to pump my pump milk and then like give it to her through a little cup or okay. spoon feed it to her. Moms during that period, they can like, their supply can get weird because they're, they're not pumping, they're not geared, they get frustrated. So I, just, I was pumping just a lot of milk. <laughs> just pumping a lot. Well, I never even figured out tandem nursing with the twins. So I, I'm very impressed that you're able, because with the twins, I just would like nurse one of them and the other one would get a bottle. And the next time we would switch, that was as best as I could do. But I do feel like you do only see the pictures on Instagram where it looks like so amazing. So it's good to know, like behind the scenes, the process. So I would love to talk about if there was anything this time around that surprised you about your fourth trimester. What surprised me, it's like a, like a positive thing, I guess. So the first time around coming from like modeling full time and just like that kind of industry, like I was not into how my body was looking after I gave birth to Zion. Like I didn't really honestly share how I felt and stuff. And I was just like really hard on myself. But what surprised me this time is I don't really care. Like I used to weigh myself in the first, the early months of the fourth trimester, like with Zion, like I was weighing myself, measuring myself. I was always trying on my jeans, like they still fit still, like, and I would get super upset. But this time I was like, I guess shocked that I just like really did not care. I was just like, I don't care. I'm cool. Like, I'm just focusing on them and I'll just, you know, work out what I can. Like, I'm not going to stress out. So I'm not, that, that's not how I am. <laughs> I'm like, really like, I need to look this way. I need to fit in this side, but I, this time I just like, don't care. <laughs> it's such a shift in mindset. I actually talk about the same thing. Like my two-year-old now, when I hold, when I pick him up, He's like, oh no, don't put me on your hip. Like your hip is hard. Put me on your belly. It's nice and squishy. And the first time he said that, I was like, huh, how do I feel about that? And I was like, oh, right. me five years ago would have been so upset if someone was like, oh, you have <laughs> such a squishy tummy. And now I kind of think it's really cute. I'm like, oh good. He finds that like comforting and soft. Right. It's just so <laughs> funny the way you think about your body differently they don't, they don't see your body as the way you saw it before. They don't see you as like, they, they, you're your mom. So they just love you unconditionally. And it just makes you feel like you appreciate more like what your body did for you as opposed to like how your body needs to look or whatever. So during your fourth trimester with Zuri, did you take, did you take time completely away from posting content or were you posting content kind of from the start after she was born? I let, actually had let people know some, cause there were some brands who were trying to work with me and I let them know like, yeah, so I'm going to take some time off from like just sharing partnerships and I'm just going to share like whatever I feel like I want to share. Um, so I was still sharing content, but just like what I felt today, I want to share this. I feel this today and I would just share it. And I just let other brands know, like, I'm going to reach out to you when I'm, I'm ready. Cause there are people who are like, wanting me to post stuff the week after giving birth or stuff and like, well, when you feel comfortable sharing, I was like, I'll reach out to you. I'm just going to take some time to, you know, get, I just came home. <laughs> like yeah. I'm having a baby and just take time. So I think I started like maybe like two, like a few days after I just shared that I gave birth and then that was it. And then it took a few days and just shared what I was just feeling in that moment. Cause you've shared a lot about kind of fourth trimester topics, like postpartum topics, like talking about pelvic floor, yeah. talking about breastfeeding, talking about healing. And so that's just kind of whatever your, your process for deciding what to share, but it sounds like it's like, what is top of mind for you? And you want to get like, share with your community. 
yeah that's that's kind of really what it is um like a lot of partnerships i'll have i'll just you know mix them in through like what i'm sharing anything that i partner with i'm it's like organically like it's a brand that i i want to work with it's something that i'm supporting so it just kind of it, it'll blend in with my feed because it's what i'm really doing or using in life i'll even have a post plan like oh i'm gonna share this tomorrow but then I could get up and I'm feeling something else and I'll, I'll write like a caption or something that I'm just like, I'm feeling it in a moment and I'll just share it in that moment or like record something that's happening that moment and share it. So then my question of that is, is your apartment really looks so beautiful all the time? Because whenever I see it on Instagram, I'm like, <laughs> how is it so organized that you're like able to do that off the cuff? Cause I need to learn from you on that. I just saw your beautiful apartment tour. Like it always looks great. <laughs> Thank you. With, the, with that video, I actually made another video about like how Instagram can make things look real. And then I recorded later the day after, because I recorded the tour nicely. I was, I'm going to record how it looks in a few hours. So then I recorded how it looks after. So you're going to see later. <laughs> okay. So it's not, no, it's like no one's house is like organized. I'm an organized person. At the end of the day, I always clean up. I, I have, I'm just really tidy in general, but throughout the day, it's like impossible to keep your home clean. I feel like it's just not, with kids are meant to get into things and to play. So in the process of that, things are going to be everywhere. Is there anything you share or you've shared about your fourth trimester, or just parenthood generally, where you've been surprised by the reaction that your followers and like community have? just with like um tandem nursing or like or extended breastfeeding even on top of that uh, when i was breastfeeding while i was pregnant i received i wouldn't even say my followers it's just people who want to troll on my account who just would come there and um i'm constantly blocking people like even today i blocked this woman this morning i was like i'm not waking up to this energy you're blocked <laughs> i'm done um just people who just have this negative stuff to say about breastfeeding extended like you know, it's just, it's massively just like sexualized and love nasty comments, messages. Um, that shocks me because in my, my mind isn't in that aspect. I'm like, this is, I'm feeding my child. I'm, I share my journey to like help other mothers who might be struggling and just like provide information, just like support and just, you know, it's a community thing. Um, but people see it and they take it as like, oh, I want to put my you know, I want to make this sexual or I want to like try to bash you and make you feel like you're doing something wrong when you're just feeding your children. Um, people are really bothered that Zion's still nurses. That's, I posted a video recently about tandem nursing and I got a lot of messages, comments I blocked of people like, oh, like this, someone said that I was like child molesting him. Someone messaged me and I was like, mm, I don't see how that's, I don't even know oh what child molestation is. Um, and then, you know, people are just like, it's a lot of also like just ignorance because people aren't aware of tandem nursing. Well, why does he not eat food? I'm like, he eats food. He just still occasionally has, milk, but he eats food. <laughs> well, so actually just, you should, she, he eats beautiful. Like I love seeing you share what some of his meals and I'm like, this looks delicious. So yeah, he is well nourished. I just don't understand like who has the time to go out of their way to be cruel and mean it's even worse on tiktok because tiktok is a lot of like the you know younger mm -hmm. generation like teenagers they just go on if you if you go to my comments on tiktok it's like just books of oh my God. <laughs> it's like i sometimes read them I'm like this is hilarious like why are you guys i don't even know i don't get yeah. it <laughs> for me stopping nursing was always when i was like this is enough. Like I just kind of got to the point also, well, with when I will say he kind of seemed to be over it. And I feel like everyone's right. journey is so different and what, yeah. what feels right for you. And it's such a like personal decision. And as you said, it's not, it is so hard. I feel like this is so much of parenthood. Like if we could just see other people's choices as their choices and then your choices are your choices. But I feel like people feel so threatened if you're not doing like exactly what they're doing. They think you're judging them, but you're not, you're yeah. just making the best choice for your family. Exactly. That you said that that's what, that's really what it is. Um, the, the woman I blocked today, that's her issue was about, it was about, it was a post of Zuri, like recovering from having COVID, which is a cute video of her like smiling. And she was like, Oh, you took your kids out during the pandemic and you live in New York. Like who, who does that? I would never do that. Like, that's disgusting. Like my kids mean everything to me. You must not care about your kids to have, I was like, Whoa, we're not, 
at block. I was like, what are they supposed to live in a bubble? Like they have to go outside. I don't even, I didn't understand. Like you said, they feel threatened. Like, okay, well, she's making these choices. I'm not doing that. And they feel like, okay, and I want to speak up now because I feel uncomfortable with it or something. Yeah, I definitely get a lot of messages like people thanking me. And I'll, I'll, like, I read, I went, this nice said something so sweet, it made me cry. I was just like, oh my, like, I didn't know that I affected somebody to that, that point. And I was like, babe, like I was reading him messages and he's like, wow, like you're really like, I didn't, I didn't feel like I was impacting people in that way. I don't know what I thought I was doing, but I was just like, oh my God. So it, that, it, it feels great. The trolls, I'm like, whatever, you can go on, but to like connect with other moms and like to help someone out, you know, she had a rough day or you're getting through something that's, that's, you know, what's been great about all, all of this. So if you were talking to a someone who is just about to like go into the fourth trimester for the first time. Is there any advice you would give? Just prepare to give yourself a lot of grace, rest mentally, physically, um, you know, allow room for error and don't be so um, like harsh on yourself, you know, cause you're, you're going to go through so much and you're going to get through it. And when you do get through it, you're going to be like, wow, okay. I'm so strong. I, I did that. And um, something you can look back on <laughs> and be proud of yourself to get through. Yeah. Um, just, it's, it's, find comfort that every mom went through what you're about to go through and you're not alone in it. Now, there's nothing like the first time. It's like that really, like that's when I, I remember walking down the street and I, if I would see another woman who just gave birth, like a new mom, I would just, how are you? Like, I would just feel so much like love and respect immediately for that person because I'm like, I know you, you're going through, if I saw someone just, you know, barely walking, they're walking for the first time outside. I'm like, how are you? Like, like that's what makes moms have this like automatic, like motherhood bond with another mom because you just know, like they also went through so, um, so much just in the, you know, first, I feel like the first year of having a child is just a lot. It's a lot. Okay. It's why that first birthday for the kid is like really for the parents. Cause you're like, we, right. it. we got, we like. My yeah. first birthday, like a, it was a zoom call. Cause he turned one during the pandemic. And I was even so frazzled for a birthday zoom call. Like my dress wasn't zipped up. My friend the whole time said she was trying to message me like your dress is literally open. <laughs> Just like, I don't know how you're going to handle a physical party. Cause you could barely get through the, the zoom <laughs> call. <laughs> I feel like when you have your second child, they just kind of, they understand like, okay, there's a lot going on here. I'm going to just, I don't know how your second child was. But Zuri is just really mellow. She's really chill. She's not fussy. Like she's just, I'm just here being beautiful, just staring. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely, Win was like very much taking it all in, like so curious and he would like track everything, but just mm-hmm. not react trying to figure us all out but no she's super calm and also with Zion as well like he he didn't really sleep in in his stroller the TV is, until we actually got your stroller because before we had shower with you guys we had a different one and it was like I would see people walking with their babies I'm like how are they doing this how are the babies so calm and I wish we had had your sooner um um, and I also had, I was like, man, I was waiting so hard. I was like, maybe they'll get a double stroller before I Zuri's know. born. I know, and I, I like, wish. No, they so we, we have another one that's, you know, it's, it's working out great. But I was like, if you guys had one, we would have understand. I appreciate that. It was one of the things I like, seriously, with, I was like, oh, we didn't get it for Alexis. All right. Well, Alexis, thank you so much for chatting with me. Um, thank you for waiting for me and... <laughs> <laughs> like allowing you know this to still happen of course I was so excited <laughs> I was like truly I mean this is like the reason why I'm so like I love my job I love that I get to talk to parents all the time and like the fact that I know if I ever need to reschedule they're not going to blink an eye and I'm so happy to like reschedule because you never know what's going to happen any day um right we still get it done and like no one is more efficient than a parent working during their kid's nap. It's like the amount you can get done is incredible. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great Bye. weekend. Bye, you too. Today We Tried is brought to you by Kalugo, a baby gear brand founded by parents for parents. I'm your host, Christy, and our producer is Mike Pilak. Stay tuned for more. And in the meantime, remember, you got this and we've got you.